What's up you guys, Zaid here. So it's been a while since I've done a video and I kind of wanted to do a little recap as to why that is. It's been two months, which is the longest I've ever gone on YouTube without posting anything of any kind. However, I have been very active on my Instagram and Facebook. So if you guys haven't already done so, please go ahead, like and subscribe to those. And if you wouldn't mind pressing the like button once you're done watching this video, I would really, really appreciate it. So the big question is here, why haven't I posted anything for the past two months, I believe now, uh, in YouTube? Or why haven't I been around this much on YouTube? But why have I been more active on Instagram than ever before? As much as I hate using this word, it, it actually is, I think, the right word to describe the current moment, the current situation is that there's a very toxic sensation in social media at the moment, as always. If I am not going to make a difference, if I'm not going to contribute to it in any way, shape or form in any positive way, contribute to it in any positive way, then I remove myself from the equation and that way I can start working on myself. I can start doing other things. I can free up some more time. Therefore, I started just kind of backing off of YouTube. Every time I would look at my feed, it was ridiculous. I would start seeing like all this stuff from the news, all this stuff from coronavirus, which you know, wasn't to be taken lightly, but it became a little too much, especially with all the things that were happening in my life. It's like handling my life, then other people's lives and whatever they want to give me through YouTube and whatever the YouTube algorithm lets go through, which is a completely different topic on itself. Every time I looked at my feed, it was just nonstop, nonstop, either advertisement or it was just all the stuff from COVID, all the stuff from the stock market, all the stuff from the presidency. And at that point, I said, you know what, just uh, I need to kind of take some time off of this and just um, see what happens. And I did. I wasn't in the right state of mind at the moment as well as you, as I told you before. At that point, I had lost my job. Um, you know, I had gotten laid off. Luckily, I'm back at work and everything seems to be uh, pretty okay. I, I'm, I, I'm glad that everything's kind of moving forward. However, my injuries weren't getting any better and with all that, I guess, again, toxicity, I felt that it was the perfect time to go ahead and just back off, you know? I started working on myself. I started doing a whole bunch of other stuff on the side. I found that it was a perfect way to do something productive out of a bad situation. Or in my case, it was a bad situation. I, I wasn't dying of COVID or anything like that to, for all those people that, you know, went through that, it, 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 it sucks. And there's no way of me actually relating to that, you know? However, my girlfriend did get uh, pretty sick at a couple of points, but nothing nothing bad that require hospitalization. So that, that was a good thing. So I found that this also started to affect my weight. I really got stressed and I needed to do something drastic about it. And I realized that it was the perfect time to start really, really working on myself. <clears throat> now, how did I start working on myself? The way I usually always do. I started reading or listening to audiobooks. So if you guys haven't checked out Audible, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. It's a wealth of knowledge, guys, especially with traffic these days. I think it's the perfect time to listen or to hear other people's advice, to hear other people's research, to hear other people's stories, even if it's just something like a fiction book. A lot of people think, uh, why do you read fiction? I rarely listen to fiction, but every now and then I would like, I like to listen to a good story. And whether that's fiction or not, a good story is a good story period and i think audible is is, is, a, is a great thing you know and so what i was doing in the mornings since i had been laid off i was walking a lot every day i was walking anywhere for from at least fifteen thousand to twenty five thousand steps every single day you know fast at walking in the morning and i was working on 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 that and listening to all these audiobooks that were super interesting and it got my gears turning in the right way i think they were they had falling a little bit off the wagon and it got me going on this like okay we need to do something productive here we need to keep on going and then that walking simply started to propel me to do other things such as i started to work out i started to i i felt that my my injuries as you guys know i have a hip knee and bilateral shoulder injuries uh i felt that they were getting worse because of all this conditioning that was happening like this other exterior stimulation you could say that was happening i can't let this affect me i can't and so i kind of had to like snap myself back into 
snapped myself back into place and I said, what, what's the thing that's always worked? And it's always been hard work. Always, always, always been hard work. I started working out. I started being very smart about it. I, I got my, this was exactly at the time where I got my kettlebells. Cause I don't know if you guys remember, there was a point where you would try to buy kettlebells or you would try to buy any fitness equipment. You were screwed because all the gyms were closed. And so everybody said, hmm, what if I bought myself a barbell? What if I bought myself a kettlebell? Well, you're not the only guy that was thinking that or girl that was thinking that. And so everything, Amazon, like on the actual web pages, Rogue was out of everything for like a while. I think they still are out of like a bunch of stuff. I think that once I started to work on those things, my gears finally started to come back. Everything started to come back quickly. You know, I had lost my daily routine. Routine, so my daily routine was gone and I think that was very depressing for a lot of people I had a lot of friends that went through the kind of the same thing and they started seeing wow uh, you know I, I kind of don't know what to do with myself now I have so much time because of uh, this COVID thing that's happening but what do I do with it what what it, can I do something productive with it and the thing that I think I've showed the most on Instagram and Facebook again if you guys haven't seen anything I'll leave my Instagram down there is I've been running. The reason I've been running, there's a point where I can't have my earphones when I'm running. I, I have a really hard time having my earphones. Every now and then I'll do it, I'll run with my earphones, but running is so vital to, to something in my brain, my, something in my brain wants me to run. And it's the one thing that does not aggravate my hip or my knee if I do it con progressively and consistently consistently i think that's the major key because one one really weird thing that happens with my hip is if i stop working out and i sit too much it'll hurt and if i don't sit as much but i start working out it will also hurt however if i kind of level those things out i sit a little bit and then at the same time i work out a little bit and then i progressively start bumping that up my hip stops hurting for whatever reason it might be a muscle imbalance it might be whatever i've gone through therapists for the past two years and trust me they've all been completely what i we don't know so whatever it is i'm dealing with it i'm just making it happen um fuck it that's a, that's the hand that i was dealt with and let, let's just keep on moving you know but my running has improved dramatically guys uh it's it's actually even better than what it was before i don't have the the super long distance running anymore and that i think is due to i don't do enough repetition stuff because i know that aggravates my hip and i know i i am progressively adding a workload to that but it's taking more time i guess i i've realized that i needed way more time to actually introduce that volume into my training but i think my hips my my butt, <laughs> my quadriceps and everything down here is getting so much stronger, so much better. And having said that, I think all that progress is being shown in the times that I'm running. I'm, I, I try to run every day at very controlled speeds, which is something that I, I used to do, but it, before it was more of a survive the run. Now it's okay, let's keep consistent with this type of run. So every run that I try to keep at, I try to keep at an average pace of eight minutes, 20 seconds. And that is my cruise speed, that's 70%. Yesterday, actually, I, I pushed it because it was like test day for me. And it kind of sucked because I tried recording my time, but I never press the button and I, uh, to start off uh, the miles just so, I could, so my, my watch could start recording the miles. And halfway like actually like halfway through what i thought was like 12 15 minutes i realized that i hadn't pressed the button and i was like Fuck! and so i go ahead and press the button at that point and then i go for like 0.4 miles and then at that point i was checking my watch which is that's something that got me because before i would usually check my watch okay am i on pace am i on pace am i on pace and at that point i was like no i i don't want to check my pace i want to just go 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 and that's why i didn't check my pace in this particular case which ended up backfiring on me but when i got to that 0.4 miles that i actually recorded i got to a street light and the street light i usually like turn it off real quick and i try to keep on moving and i when i went once again like i stopped the watch at 0.4 and i went once again 
I forgot to turn it on again. And then like halfway through that, I was like, ah, again, it was like, but th then at this point I did realize, okay, let's keep on checking the watch. So it was probably like a third of a mile or something like that. And then after that, I just recorded, I was like, street lights or not, I'm just gonna keep on going. And I ended up doing like at, at a 90% pace, I ended up doing like a 730 uh, splits. So that wasn't bad. I mean, that was a whole minute that was shaved off just, just of like 90%. Um, Cause I know when I go 100% and I do a mile at 100%, I know I can get my mile down to like 615. Uh, I've been very happy with that. So there's a lot of stuff that's been developing uh, again start walking more, listening to audiobooks and educating myself on all aspects, uh, start to get my mind in the right track, you know, start taking care of all this and really started to work uh, out my entire, like it, my entire body, you know? So that's been a, a positive, I guess, of all this uh, COVID outcome. And now for one of the last things is uh, right now I have two companies that I kind of started. One is a meal prep company but that's gonna come out in the future a little bit more. Um, I'm working on a couple of things. But the the second thing is I started a clothes line, guys. It's called Tribe Z Collective. Uh, the Z, actually not because of Zade, it was actually because of like, like saying kind of like the last tribe. It's the last letter of the alphabet. It just so happens to be Z. Uh, <laughs> so I was really happy when I did that. Um, it, it made a lot of sense for me. The reason why I created Tribe Z is right now I feel there's a big disconnect in society due to social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, YouTube even, you know? I feel a lot that the younger generations are having a really hard time communicating amongst each other. And it's really hard. It's it's actually harder more than ever to try and find those people that click with you, you know? As a musician, I found out along the way that I really love hanging out with uh, a bunch of musicians. Musicians are just are just my thing, you know? I, I grew up around that environment. Every time I see one, like, you can, you can smell those people almost, you know? Not in a bad way, musicians. But you can see, like, th there's a walk to them, there's a talk to them, there's a, there's a different aspect to them. And Tribe Z, I think, aims to kind of unite those people. So right now, it's just Tribe Z. The next iteration is probably gonna be another, what I'm gonna be calling tribes of people, you know, not for like the tribal aspect of it, but more of because of the community that needs, I think that there's a need for community right now that is not visible in social media, that's not visible because of COVID out in the streets even, you know? It's really hard for these kids nowadays to try and find those communities. And so I'm gonna be aiming to make a community with just, you know, the idea of a shirt. So the next probably iteration will probably be an iteration for like Tribe Z musicians, you know, Tribe Z gamers. Tribe Z TikTokers, you know, whatever it may be, you know, like this is like, I'm, I'm gonna be making those ideas, so s stick around. Yeah, guys, like this is something that, uh, uh, I mean, I've created, it's taken time. It's something that I've thought about quite a bit. And, you know, and if you guys are thinking about supporting the channel, that's kind of what this is gonna be. It's, it's gonna put food on my table right now with the whole COVID situation <laughs> for sure. And at the same time, it's gonna go into going into other projects, see who I can kind of collaborate with, you know? See what I can come up with, maybe pay, uh, pay a couple of designers to design some stuff and put on the shirts. So definitely, 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 it's it's about collaboration, it's about group, it's about bonding. So hopefully in the near future, you guys will hear more about that. And if you guys, again, like to support the channel, this is a perfect way. And finally, as part of obviously this channel, there's two things that I've been working on, on a little bit more. I uh, know I've left my bearded people a little bit in the dark for a little while. And a lot of people have been asking me, hey, can you go ahead and make more videos for, for my beard? So I'm gonna be putting those out. And I already have two on the pipeline that I'm working on. They're about to be finished. So definitely stick around to see those videos right here in the channel. And the other thing is my diet. I've been going carnivore as much as possible because of the exercise at the beginning it wasn't a problem just to stick fully carnivore it was actually pretty good when i started adding more volume and intensity it was impossible to keep it carnivore for me uh strictly carnivore so i had to add carbs and the one thing that i noticed that really helped out was 
honey and Greek yogurt or just yogurt, which I'm gonna start doing my own yogurt. And then my kefir, it actually has carbs too, you know, because of the sugars and it's a really small amount actually of sugars because the bacteria actually eats the sugar. So there's not a lot of it, you know, it gets fermented and it takes away all those carbs and all those sugars and it gets very small amount. Even after getting like about, it's more of a keto carnivore diet with high protein ratio versus fat. And I've noticed that my body has responded very well to it. The one thing that I make, I consume berries. Berries, I put like strawberries, particular uh, raspberries and strawberries because they're super low on carbs. And at the same time, it gives me that little extra boost. It gives me uh, a good amount of energy just in, in just about any kind of situation. And I try to usually have these towards the end of my, my running, my exercising. That way I can definitely replenish those glycogen stores and be ready for the next day and work out maybe fasted or whatever the situation may be. But every now and then I'll go ahead and I will make a loaf of bread. And I've been having my own starter for the past two years, my own sourdough bread starter. And there's a lot that goes into that. I'm gonna make a completely separate video for you guys because I know a lot of you have families and although you guys wanna keep carnivore, you yourselves wanna keep carnivore or you wanna go keto carnivore, whatever it may be. Again, this isn't a dogmatic thing. It's whatever works for you guys. And right now at this current stage in my life, this is a tool that I'm actually using to propel myself in a different way. This is not just about maybe losing weight or getting optimal, optimal health. This is now about performance. Once it switches a little bit more into performance, then things have to change. The variables change, the outcome has to change as well. The workload changes, everything changes. My physiology changes along with that, my state of mind changes. And so I need to feel that. I need to do what my body asks of me, but in the cleanest way possible and i found that this is actually right now I, i've hit a, a good almost sweet spot where everything is working properly i don't my stomach doesn't get bloated i have it's enough energy to finish the workouts but not enough that it spills over where i'm gaining weight or anything like that and my body weight has been super stable because of it super super stable it's not like i fluctuate six pounds in one day anymore you know so there might be some method to this madness that I might get to the bottom of eventually. But yeah, still keeping mostly carnivore. Every now and then we go ahead and we add that bread that I make and it takes two days to ferment. So it, it, if I take out to do sourdough bread today, it won't be ready in two days, 48 hours. And it's overnight in the fridge. So it takes, it takes some time, you know? And there's a reason for that and I'll talk to you guys more about it in another video. But that is it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me in another episode of Sage's Experience. Again, you guys know the deal. Please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. Push that notification bell if you haven't already done so. And if you definitely want to support this channel, I would really, really appreciate it if you went into tribezcollective.com. Buy a shirt, buy one of your favorite shirts. If you're a guy, we have sizes small, medium, and large. And if you're a woman, they're small, medium, and large as well. But the shirts are unisex. So if you're regularly a medium in women's, just get one size smaller, get a small one. If you're a large in women's, get a medium, you know? But yeah, guys, definitely go ahead and check it out. That would be one way to support the channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And I'd be really happy if you guys helped me out. But yeah, Z here signing off. Zay, out. Peace.